She was a dynamic singer of great beauty and elegant style whose career spanned seven decades. In addition to being a top recording artist, her stirring performances brightened many an MGM musical. She also used her unique voice to protest racial injustice and promote civil rights. This legendary star blazed the trail for many minority performers to come. She is the one and only Lena Horne. Love is funny, or it's sad, or it's quiet, or it's mad. It's a good thing, or it's bad, but beautiful. Lena Calhoun Horn was born on June 30, 1917, in Brooklyn, New York. After showing an early flair for performing, she made her debut in the chorus of Harlem's famed Cotton Club in 1934. Keep that high to go in your soul. 16-year-old Lena sang and danced in the background, while headliners such as Cab Calloway and Duke Ellington entertained the customers. Several years later, Horn made it to Broadway, appearing in the musicals Dance With Your Gods and Lou Leslie's Blackbirds. In 1938, Lena made her feature film debut, playing a nightclub singer in The Duke Is Tops, an all-black production. You have to knock them dead tonight, honey. The house is packed. That's great, Duke. Now perhaps you'll get back some of the money you so foolishly put in your show. 21-year-old Lena Horn was hardly an accomplished actress but there was no denying the power of her singing voice. We will be the tops, just wait and see. I know you remember all I've told you. We'll see our dreams through. You remember. We'll work hard together. She also made short films intended for black audiences, such as Boogie Woogie Dream. I don't want no more excuses. Say, I don't want no jazz. Now, I don't want you, baby, if you're the last man alive. I learned my lesson. I learned it just in Looser, more ethnic style of singing the blues would soon be overhauled by powerful Metro Goldwyn Mayer. In the early 40s, an MGM talent scout spotted Horn at a Hollywood nightclub and put her under contract to legendary producer Arthur Freed. Metro's first item of business was toning down Lena's image, literally. They insisted on covering her skin with a special makeup called Light Egyptian to make her appear lighter on screen. Horn started referring to herself as the sepia Hedy Lamarr. Her hot, bluesy style was also toned down by the studio to make her more acceptable to white audiences. Lena's first film at Metro was the 1942 musical comedy Panama Hattie, starring Red Skelton. This was followed by the all-star Technicolor production Thousands Cheer, in which she sang Honeysuckle Rose. Horn was lent to 20th Century Fox to play Selena Rogers in the all-black musical Stormy Weather, co-starring Bill Bojangles Robinson and Cab Calloway. 
The film gave Lena her signature song, which she later reprised in a memorable Frank Sinatra special. Returning to MGM, she was given a co-starring role as Georgia Brown in Cabin in the Sky, alongside the great Ethel Waters and Jack Benny regular Eddie Rochester Anderson. Seem like happiness is just a thing called Joe. He got a smile that makes the lilac wanna grow. There's honey. In the honeycomb, there's sugar in the cane. There's oysters in a real oyster stew, and bubbles and sweet champagne. This was another all-black musical, a rarity for a major studio, and was directed by the versatile Vincent Minnelli. Since the film contained only black performers, audiences accepted Lena as a leading lady. But for the other MGM musicals in which she appeared, Horn was only allowed a single solo number. This was done so that her song could be edited out of prints intended for Southern theaters. Prejudiced audiences didn't want to see black performers in anything but menial roles, and Horn flatly refused to portray maids or servants. Despite MGM's homogenization of her image, Lena's specialty numbers remain true works of art. Cabin in the Sky was followed by another Vincent Minnelli film, 1943's I Dude It, starring Red Skelton and tap-dancing great Eleanor Powell. Horn was billed as herself, a role she was born to play. The following year, the service comedy Two Girls and a Sailor gave Lena a chance to swing a little with the popular hit Paper Doll. I'd rather have a paper doll that I can call my own A doll that other fellows cannot steal That same year, she crooned the classic Somebody Loves Me as Fernway de la Fere in the backstage comedy Broadway Rhythm. Horn also became the pinup girl for thousands of black GIs during the war. But she refused to do USO shows unless black soldiers were allowed in the audience. 1946's Ziegfeld Follies was an all-star salute to legendary showman Flo Ziegfeld, played by William Powell. Lena's contribution was a torch song entitled, Love Can Be a Cup of Sorrow. Oh, love can be a cup of sorrow, love. A lie. Love can make you wake tomorrow and sigh. The following year, MGM saluted another entertainment giant, composer Jerome Kern, in Till the Clouds Roll By. For the film's extended tribute to Showboat, Horn portrayed the mulatto Julie and sang the definitive rendition of the immortal Can't Help Lovin' Dat Man. And I can't 
tell you why There ain't no reason For me to love that man It must be something That the angels done plan Gotta swim, birds gotta fly. I gotta love one man till I die. Can't help loving that man of mine. But five years later, when MGM did a full-length version of Showboat, they cast beautiful and Caucasian Ava Gardner in the role of Julie. Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. The studio was afraid white audiences wouldn't accept a black woman in a substantial and romantic role opposite white actors. To make matters worse, Gardner's vocals were dubbed in by an unknown singer, Annette Warren. Never one to shy away from controversy, Lena raised eyebrows when she married white composer and pianist Lenny Hayden in 1947. He became her manager and mentor as well. Their longtime union lasted until Hayden's death in 1971. Horn returned to playing herself in 1948's Words and Music, another Metro salute to famous songwriters. This time the film centered on the lives of Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart. Lena gave Sinatra a run for his money with a terrific rendition of The Lady is a Tramp. I get too hungry for dinner at eight. I like the theater but never come late. I never bother with people I hate. That's why the lady is a tramp. Her last MGM musical was 1956's Meet Me in Las Vegas, which starred Don Daly and Sid Charisse. Horn's number was called If You Can Dream. Castles and kings are everyday things. There's no extreme if you can dream. During the 50s, Lena was blacklisted for her outspoken stand on civil rights and her friendship with alleged communist sympathizer Paul Robeson. Although her film career suffered, Horn's recording career was going great guns. 
She was also a top draw in nightclubs and in Las Vegas. In 1957, Lena had her first starring role on Broadway, opposite dashing Ricardo Montalban in the musical Jamaica. The 50s also saw Horn making appearances on television, such as this memorable Frank Sinatra show from 1959. You know, we did have an introduction for Lena Horn, but having an introduction for Lena is like introducing Perry Como to Mill Towns. That face and that voice are all the introduction Lena Horn ever needs from anybody. Bravo, Lena. She belted out a swinging version of My Heart Belongs to Daddy. While tearing off a game of golf, I may make a play or Cause my heart belongs to daddy If I invite a guy some night To dine on my fine Finn and Hattie I just adore his asking for more But my heart belongs to daddy Yes, my heart belongs to daddy So I simply couldn't be bad Yes, my heart And a classy from this moment on. Now that we are close, no more nights, more ropes. Now that we are one, the beginning has just begun. Now that we're side by side, the future looks so gay. Now we are alibis. When we say From this moment on You for me, babe Only two for tea, babe From this moment on From this lucky day No more new songs Only who from this moment on, for you've got the love I need so much, got the skin I love to touch, got the arms to hold me tight, got the sweet lips to kiss me goodnight. From this moment on, you and I, babe, we'll be riding high, babe, every care is gone. This moment on You got the love I need so much Got the skin I love to touch Got the arms to hold me tight You've got the sweet lips to kiss me And kiss me and kiss me and kiss me and Lena and Frank also teamed up for a duet on Devil in the Deep Blue Sea. I don't want you, but I hate to lose you. You've got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. I forgive you because I can't forget you. You've got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. I'll cross you off my list, but when you come knocking on my door, fate seems to 
give my heart a twist and I come hopping back for more. I love you You've got me in between The devil The 60s was a period of great progress in the civil rights movement. The outspoken horn was there in 1963 when celebrities such as James Baldwin, Marlon Brando, Burt Lancaster, Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, and Charlton Heston took part in a march on Washington, D.C. In 1969, Horn made a rare return to the big screen in an equally rare dramatic role. The film was Death of a Gunfighter, and the star was Richard Widmark. Even in this period Western, there was more than a hint of racial controversy when Widmark's character, Marshall Patch, proposed marriage to Lena as saloon owner Claire Quintana. I want to marry you. After all these years, why are you just asking me today? Her last film performance was Glinda the Good Witch in The Wiz, a 1978 all-black version of The Wizard of Oz. 34-year-old Diana Ross was a miscast Dorothy, easing on down the road alongside Michael Jackson as the Scarecrow and Nipsey Russell as the Tin Man. Although the Broadway version was a colossal hit, the movie flopped. Lena, however, continued wowing audiences with live performances for two more decades. In 1979, Horn received an honorary doctorate degree from Harvard University. And in 1981, she triumphed on Broadway in a one-woman show that led to a special Tony Award. In 1992, Lena showed up at the premiere of the movie The Mambo Kings, which was set in a world she knew all too well, 1950s nightclubs. Horn delighted her fans by coming out with a brand new album in 1996 at the age of 79. It ended up winning a Grammy Award for Best Vocal Jazz Performance. Two years later, at 82, Lena released her 40th album, Being Myself. Although her performances are now few and far between, Horn still has the power to remind us what a true star she was and always will be. Whether she's hot and sassy or cool as can be, Hollywood will always remember Lena Horn.